I'm safe inside your presence to you hold back the enemy you cover me yes. and I'm free oh Father, let your words, Father, flow from her this day, Father, that the fullness of life can be abundant in all of us, Father. So we thank you, Lord, for this wonderful day. We thank you for every heart that was touched. We thank you for touching every heart that opened itself to you, Father. And we pray right now, Father, life to abound. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hey, can I uh, ask you a question real quick while y'all are sitting down? By a show of hands, how many of y'all would love to have these guys on CD so you could play their music whenever y'all? That's what I thought. They don't have the confidence in themselves that they sound, but that's, that's next level stuff, man. Man. So I think we should start a fund together. Let's raise up some money and let's start getting these guys in the studio so we can have something to drive back and forth to, around town with. Amen? Amen. All right. Thank you, guys. I just ask for a hedge of protection around him. Father, I ask that you give him a clear mind, ears to hear, eyes to see, and a mouth to speak. That devils flee because of his obedience to the gift that you place inside of him. Father, I ask that a new song come forth. Father, I ask that it come from the throne of God. That it comes from the mouths of angels that sing glory, glory, glory to the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. Father, I thank you for the anointing that is over him. Even though we know just a glimpse of what it is, you know the fullness of what you've placed inside of him. I ask for protection over that anointing today, over his mind, over his heart, over his hands, over his eyes, over his ears, over his mouth, because all of it has been given to him by you. So, Father, we thank you. We give you honor and glory, and we ask that you bless him, abundantly bless him. In Jesus' name. I think it's appropriate that he has a Superman shirt on, because I was thinking about that while he was on stage. I was like, you know, Superman was a man that came to serve us on earth, but his powers didn't come from here on earth. His powers came from where he was. So I really think that this is appropriate for our worship leader. His strength isn't from him. His strength is from where he's been. Amen. So thank you, guys. Thank you. All right, without further ado, let me introduce my wife, Lorinda Payne. Thank you. Amen. So Tyler's not the only one I have to give a word to. <laughs> and I asked God if I could do it after church. He told me no. So Miss Terry, I saw you... Knitting. No, 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 no. It was sewing. And 
you were sitting there and you weren't, you weren't paying attention to anybody else around you. And I kept calling it a quilt. I was like, Lord, is it a quilt? Is it a quilt? Because I could see you doing one loop after another, after another, and then you turn it and other pieces would fall and you would take it and you would put it onto this quilt. And the Lord said, it's not a quilt, it's a tapestry. And what you were capturing was other people's dreams and promises that they gave up hope on. And you were taking them, and you weren't focused on them. You were focused on what God was having you do with those dreams and those, those, those desires. It was like desires that people have that they say, you know, I'd really like to have a baby, but I just, it's not possible. And you're like, okay. And you would take that desire. You would take that dream. And you would not focus on them casting it. You captured it and strategically placed it in the tapestry of what God is putting together. So I don't know the fullness of it. I just want to thank you and say, I kept hearing keeper of the stars. And I was kind of laughing. I was like, okay, Lord, really? He said, but it's a keeper of the dreams, keeper of desires, the keeper of those that have lost hope but you're going to be the one that's going to turn around and say, you know what, you may have stopped dreaming, but I'm not going to let you, and I'm not going to watch it die. Amen. Father, I just thank you for this mother in this house. I thank you that she's not just a mother to Tyler. She's a mother to many. Father, I thank you that you have strategically placed her here among us. Father, I ask that she be called blessed and that she be honored all the days of her life. Father, all of these dreams, all of these, these wants, these needs, the, de the desires that you, are, that you have identified, I thank you that she truly is a keeper, mm, that you've put her on that post, and that she will absolutely fulfill what you've called her to do at that place, at this moment. I love you. Breathe on it, Lord and protect her. In Jesus' name, amen. Mm. I am excited to be in the house of God today. Amen. He would love, there was, uh, if you'll turn me down a little bit. Thank you. Kind of blowing everybody's hair back. If, uh, if you had a struggle getting here, praise God, because you press through, and we're going to kick some devil butt today. Because guess what we're going to talk about? There's one scripture I forgot to give you, and I believe it's Proverbs I'm going to read from it. How many, who, who knows Proverbs 18, 21? Is it up there? No? Okay. Anybody? Uh, New Living. This is definitely one that if you don't know it today, you will know it when you leave and you will live it. Amen? Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruit. If you love life, you'll eat life. If you love death, you'll eat death. All right? Okay. Now you know where we're going. Father, I just ask that you bless this word. Father, I ask that I'm able to deliver it the way that you showed me. I don't want to add anything. I don't want to take anything away. I just want to deliver exactly what you have called me to do at this time. Father, I ask that you give us ears to hear, eyes to see. I pray that no offense will come in. That, Lord, I know that the devil comes to kill, steal, and destroy, but you came to give us life. So, Father, I thank you for this life-giving word that we will not be offended. We will choose not to be offended because offense is a choice. And we choose not to be offended by your word. So, Father, I just ask that I just do what it is that you've called me to do, and that's it. So, Father, I just ask as I decrease that the spirit of the living God increases. Come, Lord. 
Come, set the captives free. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, we're going to start with James 3, 1 through 12. And I'm actually going to read out of the Message Bible, which was completely awkward for me because I'm one about, we don't study just from, I go to different translations, but I always study from New Living. But in this particular one, I read this one first before I went to New Living or to King James. So it says, when you open your mouth, it's the title of it, don't be in any rush to become a teacher, my friends. Teaching is highly responsible work. Teachers are held to the strictest standards, and none of us is perfectly qualified. We get it wrong nearly every time we open our mouths. If you find someone whose speech was perfectly true, you'd have a perfect person in perfect control of life. A bit in the mouth of a horse controls the whole horse. A small rudder on a huge ship in the hands of a skilled captain sets a course in the face of the strongest winds. A word out of your mouth may seem of no account, but it can accomplish nearly anything or destroy it. It only takes a spark, remember, to set off a forest fire. A careless or wrongly placed word out of your mouth can do that. By our speech, we can ruin the world, turn harmony into chaos, throw mud on a reputation, send the whole world in smoke, and go up in smoke with it. Smoke right from the pit of hell. This is scary. You can tame a tiger, but you can't tame a tongue. It's never been done. The tongue runs wild, a wanton killer. With our tongues, we bless God our Father, and with the same tongues, we curse the very men and women he made in his image. Curses and blessings come out of the same mouth. My friends, this can't go on. A spring doesn't gush fresh water one day and then and brackish the next, does it? Apple trees don't bear strawberries, do they? Raspberry bushes don't bear apples, do they? You're not going to dip into a polluted mud hole and get a cup of clear, cool water, are you? I'm telling you. Whoo, Jesus. Amplified version titles this chapter, A Tongue of Fire. Why fire? Why is our tongue so powerful? Because blessings and curses come from it. That is huge power. When God created the heavens and the earth, what did he do? Spoke. He said, let there be, and there was. When God said, let there be light, there was light. When God said, let there be space between the waters to separate the waters of the heaven from the waters of the earth, when God said, let the waters beneath the sky flow together into one place so dry ground may appear, what he said happened. Does it stop with God? Did the power of saying stop when God finished with creation? Did the power of speaking, did it stop with creation? No, it sure didn't. Even Jesus had to speak to a storm. Even he had to say, stop. He spoke to the lame man, and he said, get up. He spoke to the blind and said, see. He spoke to the, to the deaf and say, hear. He had to speak. He spoke to the adulterous woman, and he said, you are forgiven. Go and sin no more. He even spoke to Satan in Matthew 4 when he told the devil where his position was. But how did Jesus respond? And what did he speak? The word. He said he only does what he sees the Father doing. So what are we doing with our tongue? Do we use it to edify, to build up, or to tear down? We go around day in and day out speaking a Speaking, but what are we saying? What are we doing with our tongues? 
it's obviously a pretty big deal. I made a comment yesterday when I heard a certain woman's name mentioned. And right, my first response was, oh, I cannot stand her. I hate her. I cannot even stand to hear her name. That's what came out of my mouth. And immediately it did something to me. Like immediately. Because truth was spoken out of my mouth. Bitterness came flowing out. But yet moments earlier, I'm asking God to use me like he's using Todd White to heal the land. How does that even work together? If you don't know who Todd White is, you go to Google and you type in Todd White and you go see what this man is doing for the kingdom of God. <laughs> Jesus. How does that even go together? It doesn't. How is a blessing and a curse coming out of the same mouth? How, do you, how can you say, God, be glorified in my life, and then turn around and curse him and say, you don't know what you're doing? We do that. Why? Because our ways are not his ways. Now, I understand we're all human, and I'm sure Todd White may not always be 100% on point, and there are people out there to make sure you know that. But I can see his fruit. And I will judge his fruit. I shared a scripture this morning on Facebook. It was from the book of Galatians. It says, we harvest what we plant. So we're going to go to Galatians 6. Dear brothers and sisters, if any believer is overcome by some, by some sin, you are godly. You who are godly should gently and humbly help that person back onto the right path. And be careful not to fall into the same temptation yourself. Share each other's burdens, and in this way, obey the law of Christ. If you think or you are too important to help someone, you're only fooling yourself. You're not that important. Pay careful attention to your own work, for then you will get the satisfaction of a job well done and you won't need to compare yourself to anyone else. For we are each responsible for our own conduct. Mikey, the Lord just said, don't you compare yourself to anybody else. I heard it. <laughs> Do not compare yourself. He has put a word on your heart. You don't have to search out how anyone else would deliver that word. He gave it to you for you to steward for you to stand up here and release it whenever he says so. Those who are taught the word of God should provide for their teachers, sharing all good things with them. Don't be misled. You cannot mock the justice of God. You will always harvest what you plant. Scary. Those who live only to satisfy their own sinful nature will harvest decay and death from that sinful nature. But those who live to please the Spirit will harvest everlasting life from the Spirit. So let's not get tired of doing what is good. At just the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessing if we... Does it say it up there? Say it again. Don't give up. Therefore, whenever we have the opportunity, we should do... To who? Hmm especially to those in the family of faith. The way we show love to others, we'll have it in here. We'll have it in here. That's why family is really important. We'll show grace. We'll show mercy. We'll show tenderness. We'll show discipline. We'll show it. First off, I love the word of God. I love how brutally truthful it is. I mean, he punches it. It's like, oh. I didn't feel very good, but it's my flesh that's dying, but my spirit is saying, yes, yes. It says, don't fool yourself and think too highly of yourself. Boy, that'll bring you back down to reality in a heartbeat. Robbie talked about humility this morning in prayer. And I immediately thought about us being on our knees. But then the Lord showed me again a sign of surrendering. Our hands are open and the most tender area is exposed. I 
I saw us like that. When someone is hurting, most of the time, the last thing they want to be is hugged or embraced. Why? Because it's a vulnerable area for them. When I was raped, opening myself up to affection was not the most sensible or ideal act I wanted to do. But eventually, I started to trust him. But I had to stop fooling myself. We need to stop trying to fool ourselves. We don't always have to have an answer for everything. Let us choose our words wisely. It says not everyone should be a teacher. Why? Because teaching is a big deal. There's some people we shouldn't be role modeling after. There's some people we shouldn't be saying the same things as them. There's some people that we should flee from. It says flee from evil. Depart yourself. If there, I, I really, what? An appearance, exactly. We sat in a marriage class one time, and I literally heard someone say that you and your spouse could watch a certain type of video as long as you were together. Now, because of what our marriage had struggled with, I knew in my heart that couldn't be true because I lived out the destruction that came along with that. And I could not for the life of me understand why someone would say that. Now, was that truth? To them, it was. But for me, it wasn't. It wasn't for me. Instead of believing everything I heard from other people, I always asked Jesus to show me. Just like the word I'm giving you. You can't take my word for it. You should take these scriptures I'm using, weigh them yourself. You should ask Jesus to show you what's true and pure and not the gospel according to Lorenda. The word says that we will be known by the fruit we are producing. So what are we producing? What are we doing with the life God has given us? Let's read James 3 again, but this time we're going to read it out of the New Living Translation. And the title this time is Controlling the Tongue. Dear brothers and sisters, not many of you should become teachers in the church. For we who teach will be judged more strictly. Indeed, we all make many mistakes. For if we could control our tongues, we would be perfect and could also control ourselves in every other way. We can make a large horse go wherever we want by the means of a small bit in its mouth. A small rudder makes a huge ship turn wherever the pilot chooses to go, and even though the winds are strong. In the same way, the tongue is a small thing that makes grand speeches, but a tiny spark can set a great forest on fire. And among all the parts of the body, the tongue is a flame of fire. It is a whole world of wickedness corrupting your entire body. It can set your whole life on fire, for it is set on fire by hell itself. People can tame all kind of animals, birds, reptiles, fish, but no one can tame the tongue. It is restless and evil, and it's full of deadly poison. Sometimes it praises our Lord and Father, and sometimes it causes those who have been made in the image of God. I'm sorry, and sometimes it curses those who have been made in the image of God. And so blessing and cursing come pouring out of the same mouth. Surely, my brothers and sisters, this is not right. Does a spring of water bubble out, bubble out with both fresh water and bitter water? Does a fig produce olives or a grapevine produce figs? No, you can't draw fresh water from a salty spring. A tiny spark can set something as large as a forest on fire. A forest. That's not a little bit. That's not going back behind here. It is a forest. Blessing and curses come pouring out of the same vessel. I'm so guilty of this. I am not preaching this from a place of victory. I am, play, I am preaching this from a place where my heart has been convicted, but I am not condemned because of Jesus. And that is the reason why we stand here and we do it again. And we do it again. I get accused all the time by my husband on what I say or more how I say it. I'll ask, I ask him all the time, what did I do? He's like, I said, what did I say? 
He said, it's not what you said. It's how you're saying it. And he's right. He is right. I get aggravated. Oh, y'all forgot to hit record on that, huh? We'll turn it off. <laughs> I was hoping. <laughs> and she said, it's recorded. <laughs> Thanks, Ashley. <laughs> I get aggravated because he's usually right. Our words are powerful. Let's use them to build up the people around us. This doesn't mean speak fluff into their life, and it's okay. It's okay. No, there should be some, you know what? You're killing yourself. You're killing your seed. You're killing your kids. You're killing your spouse. Stop it. Words are powerful, but let's use them to build them up. Don't pacify their dysfunction, but use your words to speak life and deliverance. Discipline is love. It's definitely about the motive behind it. I can sit here with the kids all day long, and if the only time they ever hear from me or the only time you guys hear from us is if we're bringing correction, correction, then where's the love? Same thing for us. If all we ever get from you is what we're doing wrong and how we, if y'all had the church, you would do it this way, or you had our lives or our parenting or our finances. We need, somebody needs to come in and tell me on that one. But if, if that's the only time we ever hear from each other, where's the love? Where's the love in it? Elijah would never know love. I just shocked him because I just called him out. He would never know how much I love him if all I ever did was get on to him all the time, right? But because I steward the love that whenever I do speak to him, he knows, even though she may be getting on to me, she, I know that he knows that I love him. <clears throat> I put on here, that's an out-of-balance account. It's just, it's just, just like if James and I only hear you when you have a complaint, or what we're doing or not doing, that's an out-of-balance account. You can't make a withdrawal from an account you've never made a deposit into. I, I didn't even know I said that. Pretty good. <laughs> okay. We're going to end with Proverbs 1727. And this is from the Amplified. It says, He who has knowledge restrains and is careful with his words. And a man of understanding and wisdom has a cool spirit, self-control, and an even temper. We don't always have to speak, but when we do, we need to remember that our words truly carry power. You can raise the dead, but like I told Robbie today, you can cause things that need to die be gone because that's how powerful the living God inside of us is. We can break strongholds because the blood of Jesus breaks every chain, or we can come together and bind things together the way that it's supposed to be ordained and established. Amen? I pray you love me. I pray that you will allow God to show you. And if we have some quiet car rides home today, then praise God for them. But I love you, and I pray that you hear my heart this morning. Amen? Amen. Jesus, we just say yes to your word. We say yes to your truth. And Lord, we truly do ask for you to bridle our tongues. We ask that you bring conviction to our hearts where we need to maybe apologize for some words that we spoke. I know in my own life, there's some, definitely some of those going on. I pray that once you bring them to the surface, that we'll acknowledge it. We'll give it to you. And, Lord, I ask that you will repair breaches. I see these bridges right now that were actually being repaired because we realized that we spoke death over them and not life. So, Father, I just ask that in every area, even out of our ignorance, yes, even out of our ignorance, even in our thinking that we were doing well, I pray that your blood covers it, Jesus and that healing will come to those areas. But Lord, I pray that we walk out of here realizing that we don't need to cuss to make our point, that we can do it by speaking love and truth 
And that's the only thing we need. So, Father, we just thank you for today. We thank you for this time together. I pray a blessing over every single individual that is here. I love the, the feeling of unity this morning. It has blessed my heart tremendously. And I know that that can only be done by the Jesus that is inside of each and every one of us. So I love you. I praise you. We give you honor and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Yes. Yes. 630 here. She asked if the Bible study, the Chris Val, I mean, I'm sorry, Bill Johnson um, is this Tuesday here. And then the marriage class is also on Thursday. Also here. Same time, 630. We, no, we have intercessory prayer Monday. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> All right. Be blessed. Thank you, ladies. Up there. Come and see me. Come and know me. Come and search my heart and make me new. Make me new. I want to be just like you. For every curse, you're